कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे फर्स्ट कृपा माय प्रभु एंड देन राधानाथ महाराज सो एलिक्वेंटली described about the need of initiation the process of initiation and the goal of initiation so now i'm wondering what am i going to say <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> do i really have to say something <laughs> <coughs> the <door is> more. <laughs> <laughs> okay the word diksha the sanskrit word for initiation is diksha this diksha is a combination of two syllables d and sha and it has been described that d the word d stands for divagyan and the word ksha stands for kshay or kshiyate divagyan means transcendental knowledge and kshay means cessation elimination we receive the transcendental knowledge divagyan and as a result of that our material miserable condition becomes eliminated divagyanam जत दत्त कूर्जाद पापश संक्षय तस्मा दीक्षे तीसा प्रोक्ता देशिक तत्व को विदयी एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ रिसीविंग दिव्य ज्ञान ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज आवर रिएक्शन ऑफ सिंफुल एक्टिविटीज बिकम eliminated disappear that is why deshikoi the learned self realized souls call this process diksha so diksha is the process of receiving transcendental knowledge in the material nature we are in illusion illusion means we are thinking we are seeing something and thinking it to be something else an example of that has been given is a mirage a mirage appears to be water and a thirsty traveler seeing the mirage in the middle of the desert naturally thinks that there is water and he runs after the water but does he get the water is it water what he is running after it's actually just opposite to water fire hot sand is causing that illusion of water so he is thirsty and he is dying for water and here is the impression of water and he runs after that but can he ever get water out of that can he ever quench his thirst running after that mirage no another example can be given in this context you are very hungry you did not have any food for a long time and then you walk into a room 
And you see that there is a beautiful arrangement of most delicious foodstuffs on a table. But actually it is not the food that you are seeing. It's the, yeah, it's the mirror. It's a mirror. And in the mirror you are seeing the reflection of the food. Now being hungry, what you naturally tend to do? You just run to get that. But what do you do? What do you get? Uh, you just bump into the mirror. You get hurt. Instead of food to quench your hunger, to satiate your hunger, what you get is pain. But you think, the well, I didn't hard, try hard enough. Maybe because I didn't try hard enough, that's why I didn't get the food. <laughs> so you take a few steps back and charge even harder. <laughs> what do you get? More pain. And you keep doing that again and again and again. Each time the effort becomes more intense, more forceful. And the result is more and more pain. But then somebody comes and tells you, look, what you are seeing is a reflection on a mirror. Endeavoring to get the food out of that to satisfy your hunger will never work. The food is not there. It's a reflection, but the real food is there. And then he makes you turn your face. Like, if you listen to him, then you get the information about real food that will satisfy your hunger. So who is that person who gives you that information? That is a guru. As <clears throat> both Kripamai Prabhu and Radhanath Maharaj pointed out, uh, three types of gurus. Bhartma Pradarsha Guru, Diksha Guru, Shiksha Guru. Actually, Hari Bhakti Vilas is pointing out that their Bhartma Pradarsha Guru also is a Shiksha Guru. There are two types of gurus. Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru. Bhartma Pradarsha Guru also is a Shiksha Guru. And, but he is the first one who actually tells you, this is the Bhartma, this is the path. Take this path. And this is the path of real information. And that is the Bhagyan. Now in another way it has been pointed out that this Dibba Gyan comes in the form of mantra. Mantra means what? Mantra means transcendental sound vibration. Mantra means informations from the other reality. The sound vibration, the sound the information that is coming down from another world, down here through a, a very special type of sound vibration, that is called mantra. Sound has been classified generally into three categories. One is meaningless sound. Uh, meaningless sound. This sound it's a sound, but it doesn't convey any meaning. But then there are meaningful sound. The sound that carries certain information, certain impressions. Mm -hmm. Like it is through sound we actually receive informations. Microphone. Uh, the sound is carrying certain information, the information about certain object. And most of the times we are actually dealing with the meaningful sounds of material world, conveying the meanings or purpose or identity of different material objects. But there is another kind of sound. That sound 
carries the information about the spiritual reality. And that is mantra. And this mantra is kept as a secret because it's very powerful sound vibration. Just like a very powerful weapon, will it be given to anybody or everybody? The access to the nuclear weapon, is it given to anyone or everyone? No. It is preserved for some very, very specially qualified, responsible individuals. Similarly, the sound vibration from the spiritual world, which is in the form of mantra, is reserved to be given to qualified persons only. And that is the only way that one could receive the mantra. The guru used to give the mantra to a qualified disciple. Otherwise, there was no way we could get it. And the process when the guru imparts this mantra to a qualified candidate is called diksha. It is through the process of diksha the guru is to impart the knowledge. And what a disciple used to do? A disciple used to meditate upon that mantra. And the guru would show him also, teach him also how to meditate upon the mantra. Just chanting the mantra is not enough. Guru directs how to meditate upon the mantra. Generally, these mantras have three aspects. The first aspect of the mantra is vija. Vija means the seed. And then, second aspect of the mantra is nam, or the name of the personality who this mantra is indicating. And then the third aspect of the mantra is nyasa, or the way to, the process, or the way to meditate upon the mantra. So these are the three aspects of mantra, which is known as Gayatri. Hmm. Gayatri. Gayat, meaning by singing, it's not only meditated, one actually chants the mantra internally as a song. And by singing this mantra, one becomes delivered. Uh, gaya trayate iti gayatri. Trayate iti means trayate uh, delivers. Uh, also another consideration of mantra is Manang trayate iti mantra. Manang means mind and trayate means delivers. Actually all our problems in the material nature is that one uh, factor, mind. But of course mind can be an enemy and mind can be a friend. When the mind is running to a, when the mind is dragging the consciousness towards the material direction, it's an enemy. And when the mind is thinking about Krishna, meditating upon Krishna, then the mind is the greatest of our friends. So, <clears throat> this is hmm, the mantra that one receives by the mercy of a bona fide spiritual master. What is the qualification of a bona fide spiritual master? What is the bona fide of a bona fide spiritual master? The bona fide of, bona fide of a bona fide spiritual master is that he is a disciple of a bona fide spiritual master. And his spiritual master's qualification is that he is a disciple of a bona fide spiritual master. And this way it goes all the way up to the supreme spiritual master, Krishna. Krishna is the originator of all the bona fide sampradayas. There are four bona fide sampradayas, Brahma, Brahma sampradaya, Sri sampradaya, Rudra sampradaya and Kumara sampradaya. 
Brahma Sampradaya, the Sampradaya that originated from Lord Brahma. Shri, Lakshmi Devi is the originator. She received the knowledge from Krishna and she imparted the knowledge to her followers. Then Rudra, Lord Shiva, received the mantra from Shankarshan and he gave it to his disciples. And Kumar, the four Kumars, uh, Shanak, Shanatan, Shanandan, and Shanat Kumar. These are the four bona fide sampradayas. So when it comes to receiving mantra from, in, from a proper source, the scriptures are saying that they have to be from these four sampradayas. This Chattara Kshiti Pavana, these four sampradayas are the deliverer of this material world. So it's very important that we receive the mantra, one receives the mantra from a bona fide spiritual master belonging to bona fide sampradayas. And we belong to Brahma sampradaya. Krishna imparted the knowledge to Brahma. Then Brahma gave it to Narad Muni. Narad Muni gave it to Vasudev. Then <clears throat> in Kali Yuga, when the Disciplic succession was under great uh, uh, jeopardy. Then Madhvacharya appeared to revive uh, the Sampradaya. Therefore, it is Brahma Madhva. Uh, Brahma to Madhvacharya. And then, about 500 years ago, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blessed this Sampradaya by accepting initiation in this Sampradaya from Ishwara Puripad. So these are the, and uh, this is our Sampradaya. Brahma, Madhva, Gauriya Sampradaya. And what is the specialty of this Gauriya Sampradaya? The specialty of Gauriya Sampradaya is other Sampradayas get the Gayatri Mantra from the Gurus. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and gave a very special mantra. That's the Maha Mantra. Mantras are there, but there are innumerable mantras. But there is only one Maha Mantra. That is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So this is the gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now consider mantras are kept as a secret. Any mantra is kept as a secret. So how secret this Mahamantra must have been? is the most secret mantra. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what did he do? He came and distributed it to anyone and every, everyone without any consideration of qualification. No consideration of qualification. Why? Because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw that in this age, no one is going to be qualified. Practically no one is going to be and in this age, everyone is in an absolutely helpless condition. Therefore, he gave this most powerful spiritual gift, most precious spiritual wealth, to deliver the most fallen souls of the age of Kali. That is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's gift. And as Radhat Maharaj pointed out so wonderfully, that this holy name, this Maha Mantra, is actually the, the source of Prem. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has actually has described this Maha Mantra as a bud of Krishna Prem. Premer Kolika Nam, Adbhuta Rashiro Dham. This holy name of Krishna, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, is like a bud of Krishna Prem, which is a reservoir 
of all wonderful qualities of Krishna. Adbhuta Rashirodham. Hanobal Korave Prakash. It displays such amazing potency of Krishna. And then he's saying that this bud, just little blooming, when a bud op bud initially is complete looks completely different from the flower. It's just a tiny little uh, green speck at the beginning. It doesn't even have a shape like that of a what to speak of a flower. It doesn't have the shape of your, even a leaf. It's tiny little small thing. It grows, but the flowers will be uh, will look completely different from the bud. But the flower is there within the bud. And pure chanting of the holy name uh, will make this bud to bloom. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying when this bud blooms a little bit, Ikosh Ishot Bikoshi Puna, Dakhai Nijo Rupo Guna. When the bud blooms a little bit, not fully, just a little bit, it bloomed. It just started to take the shape of the flower. What does this holy name do at that time? It shows us the qualities and beauty of Krishna. Krishna's form becomes manifest from that bud. And Chitta Hori Loi Krishna Pash. Stealing our heart, it takes us to Krishna. And then, what to speak of Purna Bikoshita Hoya when the bud becomes fully bloomed. Broje More Jai Loya. It takes me to Vrindavan. <laughs> and Dakhai Moro Sharupa Bilash and displays Krishna's eternal pastimes there. So this is how everything is there in this holy name. That is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this respect, hmm, Prabhupada mentioned that why Mahaprabhu gave the holy name? It's because our disease condition is so bad that we need a very special medicine. <laughs> no other medicine will work. Uh, therefore, we need uh, a transcendental chemotherapy. <laughs> Nothing else will work. So that's why Mahaprabhu gave this holy name and <clears throat> we have the uh, wonderful opportunity in this age as Maharaj pointed out uh, the Kalir Doshe Nidhe Rajan Astihi Eko Mahan Guna In this age of Kali there is one great advantage. It is because of that advantage Considering that advantage, Parikshit Maharaj didn't kill Kali. Parikshit Maharaj was about to kill Kali when he saw that this person is torturing a bull and a cow. A Kshatriya king can never tolerate such a crime. He immediately unseats his sword and just about to chop his head off. But Kali begged for his life. That's another noble character, quality of a Kshatriya. When somebody begs for his, for from him, he, he forgives him. But he says, you can't stay in my kingdom. Get out of here. You're banished from my kingdom. Kali said, the entire earth planet is your domain. If you banish me, where shall I go? And he said, okay, you can stay where there is meat eating, where there is intoxication, where there is illicit sex, and where there is gambling. Kali looked around and saw that nobody is breaking those, nobody is indulging in those activities. He said, tell me, where shall I go? And then he said, okay, you can stay in where there is accumulation of gold. Where the gold is accumulated but not used in Krishna's service, that is another place of So, <clears throat> now otherwise Parikshit Maharaj actually would have killed Kali, but Parikshit Maharaj considered this point 
that this has a great advantage. In this age, just by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one will become delivered from this material nature and achieve the highest spiritual benefit. Therefore, he spared Kali. So that is the advantage we have. Mahaprabhu gave us the holy name. Another thing I want to also mention in this respect, the difference between Gayatri, why, why Maha, ma, this is Maha Mantra, why this particular mantra is Maha Mantra. In Gayatri I mentioned there are three aspects. Those who are getting second initiation can take note of that. Vij, Nam and Nyas. Vij is the seed of the mantra. Different mantras have different seeds. Like for example, Brahma Gayatri has the seed as Om. Om is the Vij. Similarly, Krishna Gayatri has Vij. Guru Gayatri has Vij. Devi Gayatri has Vij. These are different Vij of the mantra. Then the Nam. In the middle is the name of the personality or identity of the personality upon whom this one should meditate by chanting the mantra. And the third aspect is nas, the way one should chant the mantra, meditate upon the mantra. So this, this is what constitutes a mantra or Gayatri mantra. Now of these three, which, one, which aspect is most important? The one that is in the middle? Ah. The most precious thing you keep in the middle. So, this Nam is the most important aspect. And with the Maha Mantra, there is no Vij, no consideration of Vij, no consideration of Nas, just Nam and Nam and Nam only. <laughs> Therefore, it is Maha Mantra. Now, in this respect, we can take note of one thing. Prabhupada also called Panchatatta Mantra as Maha Mantra. Because that's also Nam, Nam and Nam. Uh, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Bhashadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare So please take advantage of this most wonderful gift that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. Not just Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, who? Krishna along with Srimati Radharani. Krishna in the mood of Srimati Radharani came to distribute this uh, very special gift. And Srila Prabhupada took that gift and distributed it all over the world. And he made this wonderful arrangement through the International Society for Krishna Consciousness that this distribution mission, distribution work will continue to go on spreading this movement, distributing the holy name more and more with the passing of time. And eventually a time will come when the, all the cities and towns and villages of this world will be inundated with this holy name, where people will be chanting the holy name everywhere. And it's going to happen. And the wonderful arrangement Srila Prabhupada has made for that. And all we have to do is simply become, uh, become involved in this arrangement. Take advantage of this arrangement. And then not only our lives will become successful, everybody will benefit from that. Thank you all very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.